No confidence in this one. Let's find the sine of two cosine inverse of x. So you're going to begin by typing the following: that the theta there is equal to the cosine of the inverse of x. You should really see this for yourself now as cosine of inverse, and then here you should see this as x divided by one. Based on that, we can make a triangle. That triangle might look like the following, and then in this context, the horizontal leg is x from cosine inverse, where it says x over one, and then this is one by definition, which means this side can be found using the Pythagorean theorem to be the following. You can say x squared plus y squared here is equal to 1 squared as the first step. And then from there you would say that x squared plus y squared is equal to 1. And then you solve this for y, so y squared at first would be equal to 1 minus x squared. And then here you would take the square root, so y by itself would be equal to the square root of 1 minus x squared. So now this expression, square root of 1 minus x squared, labels the vertical side in the triangle, which means the following. Now you can replace cosine inverse of x with theta by its definition there up there. So it's going to be sine of 2 and then theta this way. There's a trig identity that says the following is true. 2 cosine of theta times the sine of theta this way. And then what you can do is you can replace the cosine and sine with the definitions from the triangle. So 2 cosine is x over 1 from the triangle. So at first it might look like cosine is gets replaced with x over 1. And the next part would be a sine of theta from the triangle. At first it will look like the following essentially. The square root there of 1 minus x squared and this whole thing would hang over 1 this way. And then this here would become 2x and then the square root of that expression 1 minus x squared. The condition that you have to apply to the expression of the square root that says the following, negative 1 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to positive 1. And the reason is the following. If you try to plug in something more than positive 1 or, for example, less than negative 1, you would end up with the negative under the square root. So imagine x is the value 2. So it would look like this, 2 times 2, which is okay. And then here would have the square root of 1 minus and then 2 squared. So that would give you there 4. And then the square root of 1 minus 4, which lastly would give you 4, and the square root of negative 3, which is not defined. That's why you need a condition on the bottom in this position. Thank you, friends. I'll see you in another video. Please leave a like and subscribe.